Take your Bibles and turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I'm going to try to stay in the lines this morning. We uh, have a miracle inside of a miracle in this text. So I thought better to this morning focus on the miracle that interrupts the first miracle that's prepared to happen. And then this evening we'll focus on the miracle that starts and ends this portion of Mark chapter 5. Starting in verse 21 here. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee. Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And when Jesus went with him, much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things, uh, suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt, it, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Then, and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you'll help us this morning. Lord, help us to focus in on your word. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, my Lord, my strength and my redeemer, give me the words to speak this morning. Hide me behind the cross, Lord. Open our spirits as we feast upon your word. May we be encouraged in your word. May we be strengthened in your word. And Lord, how can we even work through these gospels without lifting up and magnifying your name. What a mighty savior you are. What a mighty healer you are. Lord, thank you for all that you've done in my life. Lord, I thank you and praise you that once upon a time in my life, when I was found with great issue, you healed me too. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done in Jesus name. Amen. Last week when we closed out, uh, we closed out how Jesus healed uh, the demoniac. And we talked about how chapter 5 really packs in this power of Jesus. We've seen how Jesus has power over disease, power over death. And we see how Jesus house has power over the demoniac. we seen when we closed out last week, this demoniac, this, this man who was out of his mind, ended up in his right mind. This man who seemed seemingly lost it all, got it all back and more. The man who was running was then sitting. The man who was screaming aloud in pain is now shouting for joy. But we know that when we come to the end of this port, the portion of the story that deals with the demoniac, the people there in Gadara did not wish that Jesus would stay there. They didn't want him to stay. They didn't want him to continue in their coast and do many great miracles. So the Lord and the disciples entered into the ship and have now gone to the other side. The welcoming party on this other side was a great miracle looking to see, or was a great crowd looking for a miracle from our Jesus. And there was also a specific man, this man, a religious leader, a man by the name of Jairus, who is waiting for 
Jesus. And this is the Jewish side of the coast. This is the west side of the coast. And one of the things that you're seeing here in Mark, it doesn't matter what side of the sea is on, Jesus arrives at people who have issues. Jesus arrives at people who has needs. You know what? This is a fact that still remains true today. It doesn't matter what side of the ocean you're on. It doesn't matter what side of the pond you're on. You will always find people who have issues to on this day a crowd would be waiting for him on this day Jairus would be waiting for him on this day a woman who had been battling a disease for a long time would be looking for our Jesus we would find out as we read through and close out Mark chapter 5 today hey there's still no one like our Jesus and we should still rejoice today that there's still no one and there never will be anyone like our Jesus on this day as he arrives on the shore this just picture this in your mind he arrives on the shore after these great miracles after the calming of the storm after the healing of the demoniac and now he arrives again on the other side of the shore and there is this crowd waiting for him and there is this crowd shouting for him and then there's this man named Jairus which approaches our Lord and upon hearing his cry upon hearing Jairus's plea the Lord hears him and according to verse 24 goes with him him. But as they went, as they're on their way to Jairus's house to, to, to hear to hear Jairus's need, his daughter is sick. His daughter, who is also 12 years old, he hears this need and they're moving. But as they're on their way to Jairus's house, he is interrupted by a woman who also has been battling an issue for 12 years. And verse 25 says, and a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, coming to seek the Lord on this day, was a woman with an issue. You know what's so special about this woman? Do you know why she's recorded down in scriptures? Because this woman, not only did she have an issue, but this woman had a plan for her issue. Her plan that she was going to take her issue to the Lord. She was tired of having this issue. There was so much that can be drawn from this text here in Mark chapter 5 that we don't even have the time to give it all. But you know what excites me when I read this text? What gave this woman unction? What gave this woman passion is what we see in verse 27. Verse 27 says that when she heard about him. And when she heard about Jesus, when she heard about what Jesus has done, when she heard it, she knew that it was time to get to this man. I can only imagine this lady. Picture it in your mind. 12 years battling this disease. 12 years of agony. 12 years of all kinds of social outcasts. 12 years. And then news comes to your ears. Imagine battling the ailment of this life for 12 years and then you hear the news that there's this man named Jesus who's just arrived at your coast who can perform a mighty work and heal you. I imagine when this woman heard the news about this man named Jesus, that's what 27 says, when she heard, when she had heard of Jesus, she came, she came in the press um, behind. She didn't know nothing about this man at this moment. She had heard nothing of Jesus. She just sat sadly in this state, bleeding, plagued by her issues. But some news arrived that she'd never heard before. Someone began to tell her about this man who just arrived. Hey, this man named Jesus, you know what he did? He healed a cripple. This man named Jesus, he healed a man with a weathered hand. This man named Jesus just cast it out the demons on the other side of the sea. This man named Jesus just calmed the sea. This man named Jesus rebukes the religious leaders of the day and says that there is a way, even in the midst of disease, even in the midst of all the turmoils of this life, that you truly can have fellowship with God. And listen, there's something about this man named Jesus I heard even more. 
that down by this man named Peter's house, outside of the synagogue, that all the people who were ill, those who were sick, those who were pest possessed with demons, they've arrived outside of Peter's house, and he didn't just heal one of them, he healed them all. This is the news that she had heard. This is the news that had arrived at her ears when it says that she had heard of this man named Jesus there was something special she heard about the power that rested in him ma'am have you heard about this man named Jesus I can only imagine what's going through her mind upon hearing all that Jesus can do 12 years I've been fighting this 12 years I fought this issues of blood 12 years and now all my money is gone. I have nothing left. I'm ready to quit. And now you're telling me that, that this man named Jesus can heal me. Can you tell me all that he's done again? Can you say it to me again? Let me make sure that I've heard this correctly about this man named Jesus. Just one man did all of this. Verse 26, when I read verse 26, it's kind of like a screenplay in my mind. When she heard about this man named Jesus, verse 26 kind of gives you what she has been dealing with for the last 12 years. In verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. As she heard... I can see this woman who in their society was considered a social outcast. Under the Mosaic law, she was declared unclean. This disease had defiled her and this disease had disabled her. Her position in society was that of outcast. If she was married, her marriage was not normal. She was untouchable. According to the Mosaic law, this lady was not even allowed in the sanctuary to worship. And she didn't like it. She didn't want it to be this way. But what else can she do? This condition was so bad. Don't miss this in the text. Verse 26 really lays out the true extent of this woman's condition. In verse 26 says, she spent all that she had. You know what that means? It means all the money that she had, all the inheritance, all the money of her labors, all was spent to this disease. There was nothing left. She gave all that she had, all of her possession would be sold to try to bring somebody in that could make her situation whole. She had given her all to it, but yet nothing had cured this woman. Twelve years afflicted, twelve years wanting to be rid of this, twelve years. Well, ma'am, after twelve years, I know you can tell us something good, right? After all of these visits to the doctor, I'm sure that you had a little bit of relief of your pain. I'm sure that you have had this burden eased a little bit. I'm sure after 12 years, you're, you're doing better now, right? I mean, sure, it's not as, as bad. It's not as good as you'd like it to be, but you're doing a little better. No, it had done nothing for her. Verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians. How have you been the last 12 years? Listen, I've been suffering from this horrible disease. I've been suffering from this horrible ailment. But you know what's even worse than this horrible disease? I've suffered many things from many different physicians, meaning the physicians were also inflicting much pain upon her, trying their new recipes, trying their new antidotes, and yet nothing would make her whole. Yet nothing would bring relief to her. Many physicians, but yet the doctor found no relief. Surely all those doctors, you feel better now. Surely you feel, feel somewhat better, right? Goodness, it's, it's been 12 years. How are you feeling? In the end of verse 26, and had spent all that she had and nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. All this investment, all this money spent, all of these doctors, they not only caused her more pain and more affliction, but it didn't even so much as bring one little bit of relief. The condition only continued to get worse and worse and worse. When you hear all of that, you think all of that makes the first sentence of verse 27 come off the page. 
<laughs> this is exactly where she is. An outcast. She can't even touch people because they would be declared ceremonially unclean. What about your marriage? It's terrible. There's no natural affection here. What about your personal condition? Every day I'm in agony. What about the doctors? They hurt me even worse. But when you read this and you see her condition, you really start to think, wow, look at, look at the excitement that would have came in her heart when the verse part of verse 27 says, and when she had heard of Jesus. <laughs> this was my condition. This is exactly where she was. But when she heard of Jesus, I believe there'd be Again, something to, to spark inside of her. And there was some kind of excitement inside of her. She knew in her heart, this man named Jesus, I must not waste no time but get to him. And this is exactly what I need. I need this man named Jesus. Listen, some today may even be here today struggling with your own issue. Your own issue may have brought you disappointment. Your own issue may have brought you some kind of financial ruin. Your own issue may have brought you to a place where you feel like there's something going on in your life where there is no hope. Your issue that you may have going on in your life may be physical. You may say, well, I've been praying to God and asking God to heal me from this ailment for many, many years, maybe even 12 years, but this issue is still not found relief. Your issue may be that your situation may that be something that has you on the outside of correct worship with the Lord. Your issue may have you in a position with your spouse that you should not be. Your issue may have you in a place that you should not be with your parents. Every church has issues and everyone has issues. But what makes this woman so special is not that she had issues, but what makes this woman so special is that she had issues. And when she had heard of Jesus, she knew she needed to take her issues to him. She recognized her condition and made haste to him. It's what she did when she heard about this man named Jesus who could help her with her issues. And by the way, have you heard? Have you heard about this man named Jesus? Well, you know, I have issues, Pastor. I have issues, and they're not any small things. I mean, these are really big problems. These are really grand problems. I appreciate you saying that I need to take this to Jesus, or I need to start praying. I mean, is that always your go-to? Yes! Why? Because I know who Jesus is. When I, when I hear of the issues, I know exactly where to go because I know my Savior. When this woman heard of Jesus, listen, what society could not do, what 12 years of treatment could not do, what the physicians could not do, what the medicines could not do, Jesus was able to do. And that is an encouragement inside of us that though the world's advice will fail, though the things of this life will fail, though the things of this life will never bring us joy, will never bring bring us peace, will never bring satisfaction. In Jesus, we have the ability to find peace that passes all understanding. We have the ability to have nothing and yet be satisfied. We be able, we're able to have nothing and yet have a joy that the world has never experienced, not because of who I am, not because I'm just a humble guy. It's because I have Jesus. We all have issues, but do we all have Jesus? Well, good news for this lady. Uh, we have a specialist just for you. He, he has never met a case that he could not heal. He's never found a heart that he could not fix. He's never found a sinner he could not save. He's never been accused of misdiagnosis. He's never been accused of mal malpractice. No, the best part of it all, that this atoning work, that this powerful work that this man named Jesus did, you want to know how much it's going to cost for you? The bill has already been paid on Calvary. There's going to be no bill from this. Don't worry about exhausting your income. It doesn't do no good here. I don't want your possessions, nor do I need your assets. What it takes to be restored, what it takes to be made whole, what it takes to have your issues lifted. The man who's coming to redeem you already paid the bill. What was required to be made right with God was also supplied 
by God so that we could be made right with him. And this is why we sing these songs like Jesus paid it all. And I know that oftentimes you, when we tell people about all that Jesus did, they try to magnify their sin. We hear it, they try to exalt their sin, that it is far beyond the reach of Jesus' blood, but it is just not so. The bill is covered. Well, you don't understand. I was a real bad drug abuser. Covered. I, I'm still a real bad drug abuser. Covered. You don't understand. I was a habitual cheater covered. I'm a deep sinner. It's covered. I have a foul mouth covered. I'm a murderer. It's covered. All is covered in him. It doesn't matter what the issue is. What Christ has done is far beyond our understanding. Don't try to belittle all that he can do just so that we can exalt our sin. And that's what we try to do when we put our sin out of his reach. The bill for redemption, the bill for being made whole has been paid. That's why we get excited when we say Jesus paid it all. That's why we get so excited when we sing such a hymn. You know, we don't pay that. We don't sing that song as some say. Jesus has paid some. And Jesus did it all. And the rest is up to us. No, it has all been covered. Have you heard that your issue, that thing that bothers you deep down inside, the thing that you don't like to tell no one about, the issues that bother you most, you don't even tell your spouse, the things that bother you and weigh you down in this life, that issue can be covered under Jesus. The deal is, we must take it to Jesus. And this is what this lady did. Here at the foot of Jesus, it's all been covered. Here you can find the healing that you've been looking for. Maybe it's like I said, the thing that you don't even want to tell your friends, that you don't want to tell others because you're so embarrassed. Let me tell you this. This lady came to Jesus privately. She didn't want anyone to know about her issue. She came behind in the press. She didn't publicly cry out, Jesus, Jesus, come and heal me. No, she came behind in the press. She was an outcast in society. She was embarrassed by her condition. And this wasn't a proud situation for her. She came behind in the press and made private. But what she came to Jesus being so private about that she didn't want no one else to know about because it was such a shame after she encountered Jesus, she publicly announced, this is exactly where I was and this is exactly where I am. Why? Because of Jesus. Oftentimes I think we get so worried about how people are going to view me. How's brother so-and-so going to view me? How's sister so-and-so going to view me? How's my family going to look at me? What are these people going to think of me if I go forward and confess that I have not been living right, that I have an issue, and that I'm struggling right now? What are they going to think? Listen, when you go and you cast it at the feet of Jesus and your issue is lifted, you're going to walk away praising God that he delivered you from this issue. And there's no reason to be embarrassed. There's no reason to hide it. Why? Because we know who Jesus is and we should praise the Lord. Yeah, you had it issue but you did the right thing you took it to King Jesus this is what this woman did don't ever let anyone get in your mind that your issue is an issue that's not worth getting right and that your issue is not worth handling because of what people might think you know what who cares what people might think you know, the issue that you're tired of raising your hand about, tired of requesting prayer for, tired of this, tired of that. That's the one the great physician can remove from your life. When she heard of Jesus, when she heard of all that Jesus could do, she didn't pull up the hammock and kick back and fantasize about a life that would involve Jesus. She didn't waste time. She didn't say, you know what, I'm going to get around to this. Let me think about if this Jesus is worth pursuing. When she heard of all that Jesus could do, she made, wasted no time and made haste to get to him. Verse 27, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind. Can you see the crowd? Can you see the crowd all around Jesus as they're moving towards Jairus' house? The crowd is all packed in tightly around him. And she came in the press behind. And this woman had come to the conclusion that no mosaic rule that she was unclean could stop her from getting to Jesus. And she come to the conclusion that this crowd that was all around Jesus was going to stop her from getting to Jesus. 
She had an issue, and she had also seen the healer. She had heard, so she pressed to get the matter to him. We say we got issues. We say we want the Lord to do things. We say we want God to perform a mighty work. Well, how is your press this evening? How is your press this morning? How have you been pressing to get things to God? Have you, you know, you say, well, this is a big issue in my life. This is a big struggle in my life. How's the press? Have you, have you allowed your television to stop you? TV is not bad, but if it interrupts the press of getting your issues to the Lord, it's it's a problem. You know, cell phones ain't bad, but if it interrupts the press, it's a bad thing. I don't even care if you play video games, but if it interrupts the press of getting your issues to the Lord, if it interrupts your communication with the Lord, if it interrupts your fellowship with the Lord, it's a big deal. This woman seen her situation and her condition, and she recognized it was real. Twelve long years she agonized in pain, and nothing was going to interrupt her. She was on the full press. I am going to get through here. If I touch a hundred people and I make a hundred people ceremonially unclean, it does not matter because why? I need to get to Jesus. Do you see your issues as a matter that you need to get to Jesus? And do you look at your situation and say, this is a matter that I need to get to Jesus? And if you see it as that, how serious have you been about getting your issues to Jesus? See in her mind this woman here this woman had faith that Jesus could do something before she even got there. She had faith that Jesus would do something before she even got there. Verse 28 says that she reasoned in her mind, but if I could just touch his clothes. Verse 28, for she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She had no doubt. Uh, if I get to him, I will be partially healed. No, if I get to him, I'll be a little bit better. No, she knew that if she could just get to Jesus, even though the world could not help her, she knew if she just got to him, she would be made completely whole. If I just get to him, this plague will be over. We are gathered here today, and you know what? We've heard about Jesus all this morning, have we not? We've sang about him. We've prayed to him. We've given money. You probably even listened to Christian radio on your way here. And you was praising the Lord. And you may have heard those things. But listen, just because you've been surrounded by Jesus today, and just because you heard people pray to Jesus, just because you have listened to somebody read from his word, just because you've been all around him, just because you've bumped into him, does not mean that you had faith in him. Listen, there was a crowd that surrounded around Jesus. Many people had bumped into Jesus. And this wasn't the first person that came and accidentally bumped into Jesus. But this woman came to Jesus, trusting in Jesus. She had faith in Jesus. There was something different about this interaction. And just because you've been all around the church, been in church your whole life, heard about God your whole life, heard about what Jesus done in your whole life, you listen to Christian radio in your time, you does not mean that you have faith in him. It doesn't mean that you're trusting in him. This the woman said, I must get my problem, my issue to Jesus. This faith was the difference for her. You know, what's your issue? What's my issue? Is our issues really an issue? Or is it that we lack the faith to take action on the issue? Now, this never gets hold. So when you see it, you have to say it. Do you see what has happened here? She, has, she had heard the good news about Jesus. She had heard the good news. You know, every time that Jesus has worked a miracle so far, even when we talked about the demoniac last week, after Jesus did this interaction and after Jesus did this mighty miracle in his life, where did we find him? He went throughout the ten cities and published it abroad, all that Jesus had done. And all men did marvel. I am thankful for Christians who don't stay quiet about what Jesus has done in their, their life. Praise God for Christians who ain't keeping the good news quiet. When it says when she had heard of Jesus, it meant that another person was telling about this man named Jesus. And then she said, I must go. And she did touch the hem of his garment. And she did work her way through the crowd. But 
in, but in doing this, she, in, in doing this act, she already reasoned in her mind, if I just get to Jesus, if I just touch his garment, I will be made whole. In verse 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. I love the gospel of Mark for this very reason. Every time you read something, it's straightway, immediately. He he's always does well with emphasizing how quickly these things happen. When she touched the hem of his garment, immediately her problems were dried up. Immediately this issue was gone away. Immediately it was removed from her. And it goes on to say in verse 30, And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And this word for virtue, we, we know this word, we re read it in Romans, it comes from the Greek word dunamos. It is to say, the Lord saying, um, and immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. And this is to say, immediately he knew that power had left him. Healing power had left him. Immediately he knew that supernatural power had left in this moment. And there was so much going on. It was almost like in her, in her mind, she knew who Jesus was. She knew exactly what she was, who, who, he, who he was. But it was like she slipped in behind in the press as if she was actually going to steal the cure. <laughs> He's not even going to know this. I'm coming in from behind. I'm going to touch the hem of his garment, and then I'm going to be made whole. I'm going to have this cure, and no one will know, and I'll be on my way. It's not so, though. And these disciples were so confused here. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? Who touched me? And this was compiling confusion for the disciples. They're baffled. They're on their way to Jairus' house. And they're looking around and they're seeing this huge crowd all around Jesus. And they look at the Lord and say, Lord, what do you mean who touched you? <laughs> look at all these people. They're thronging us. We're getting shoved all over the place as we're making forward progress to Jairus' house. And this is the question that you ask, who touched me? And the Lord would actually, in a sense, you could see it move on. He would actually just ignore them. The Lord knows exactly what happened. He's not even exactly looking for this woman. He knows exactly who she is. But the Lord in this very moment is looking for a testimony. Because you know what happens when Jesus interacts in people's life? You know what happens when Jesus touches your life? You testify about how good God has been. This woman has just experienced the power of Jesus. Her life has been changed. She has just been made whole. Her issue is no longer an issue because there's no such thing as an issue when it comes to Jesus. The Lord is asking, who touched me? And the disciples cannot even reason this. But the Lord knew that someone came to him trusting him. This was more than a touch. This was more than just a, a simple touch. They were so confused. But the Lord was looking for a testimony. It was, it was time to testify about what Jesus had done. Hey, even in this crowd this morning, as we're gathered here at the church, we know that there's people who have issues because I myself have issues. But we can testify about how Jesus turned our issues all around. There are people in the building today, and not according to my testimony, but according to their testimony that they give, and that there have been issues in your your life that Jesus has made whole. There have been people in this church, in this building today, who's went through trials, who's went through ailments, and the Lord has made their situation whole. And there's people in the church building today who have more issues, issues that we don't even understand. And you don't have to come and share your issues with me. The important thing that you see today is where to take your issues. Stop waiting around. Stop wondering how you're going to get out of this. It's time to press. It's time to get in. It's time to get to the Lord and lay your test, lay your troubles at his feet. You want to hear this lady's testimony? It, it's a sweet sweet one. It's a sweet testimony. I can just imagine as the crowd was moving by and she looked out and laid her eyes on him. That's my savior. 
That's the one I've heard all about as the crowd is moving, as they're in most in Jairus' home. I, I can just, I was, I was reading this, I was thinking about the words to that sweet hymn. This moment, 12 years. This moment, 12 years. And this is the moment I have been looking for for 12 years. And she'd been fighting and seeking help, trying to find a physician. And here it is, the crowd moving, and there's Jesus. I, I began to think of that hymn, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on all the, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let me at the throne of mercy find a sweet relief, kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Do you want to know what this woman's testimony was? She seen Jesus as he was passing by, and all in her mind was, Lord, don't pass me by. Lord, i got to get my issue to you. Lord, I've been waiting for you for 12 long years. And he looked around about to see her. That, and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But when this woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Did you get that? She's testifying to the Lord something he already knew, but it was just, she just couldn't even believe it. She's already felt his power. She's already experienced the change in her life. Immediately she knew that the problem that she was experienced was gone. Immediately she knew that the plague she had in her life was lifted. In the last part of that verse, I, I just love that section. And, and, and the, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing all that was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Jesus, you're never going to believe this. I've been fighting this ailment for 12 years. Jesus, oh man, these physicians that I've been interacting with, they've made my life so miserable. Jesus, I've gave it all. I've spent it all. I literally have nothing left. I'm an outcast. People can't touch me. I'm unclean. I'm this. I'm that Jesus. And she began to tell him all of that that has happened in her life. I don't imagine this to be a short moment. As I was thinking about this, I believe that this woman began to unfold the last traumatic 12 years of her life. And as these 12 years are unfolding, and as she's telling Jesus all the issues that she had, I began to think about Jairus, who could only see his issue. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lady, that's fine. Stop talking. We need to go. Let's get to my house. My 12-year-old daughter is sick. But she, here in this moment, begins to testify. She begins to shout to the Lord and tell him this was my condition until you Lord until I touched the hem of your garment and immediately my life has been changed oh Lord you've done a mighty work in me today and he said unto her daughter thy faith had made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague she was holy physically and holy spirit and whole spiritually and whole physically this is not to say the Lord tells her here, look, my, my clothes ain't magical. I, I mean, obviously, he, she touched the hem of his garment and he was made whole. Does this mean that the Lord's clothes were magical? No, the Lord makes it clear to her. The power was in her faith. He said, your faith hath made you whole. Notice her posture. While all those that were around her, the crowd that was bumping into Jesus, they were all standing around him and moving forward. But, you know, when we started this text, we noticed something specific about Jairus' posture. He came and he fell at the feet of Jesus. And where do we find this woman? She comes and falls at the feet of Jesus. When the Lord calls for the testimony about who touched me, she was afraid. She was trembling. Her plan was just to slip away. But she was already made whole. She had already experienced the cure and she knew it. But now the Lord was looking for a confession. You know what Romans 10, 9 says? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth 
the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He was, she was preparing to give this public confession. Lord, I, I, I heard what you was. I knew that you could do it. I came to you. I knew that if I just touched the hem of your garment, what's your testimony? I touched the hem of your garment, and everything that people said that you were, you were, and you were so much more, Lord. Add this to the list of things that can't trump you. When society can't help people today, Jesus can. When the world can't help me with my issues, Jesus can. Why do I even worry? Why do I even bother with the things of the world today? I have Jesus. The Lord's message was, you're whole. You're not partially whole. You're not somewhat whole. You are completely made whole. You're not going to need a recovery program. No need to stop by the doctors that's treating you right now and try to find some kind of extra prescription. Everything you you've ever wanted to be in your life you are right now and if you're in the building today regardless of whatever issue you have Jesus can make you whole though you though we may be around him and may we all may have been around him somewhat today listen you may say, I don't understand why you're so excited. I don't understand why you get so excited when you read about these miracles. I don't understand why it makes you shout. Because I understand Jesus. And because not only I understand Jesus, but because I've experienced what he's done in my life. He's more than just a good man. He's more than just a great guy. He's more than just a guy who, you know, somehow pulled off some miracles. He is literally the son of God. And he's the God, the son. And he came here and he died for me and performed a mighty work in my life and that's why I'm excited and if it doesn't make you excited then that is the number one flag of why you're not excited because maybe you haven't experienced what he's done in you see the crowd they didn't fall at feet and worship Jesus why because they were there for their hands out she fell at his feet and lifted her hands up she was here to worship the Lord who had done a mighty work in, our, in her life. And today, battling issues, whatever your issue may be, you may not have been looking. You may have been saying, well, I've been looking to the Lord, but have you been actually looking in faith? When this woman came to Jesus, when she got up and came to Jesus, she already had faith. She had already reasoned in her mind. When I get there, when I finally get through the crowd, he's so powerful. He's so amazing that if I just touch the hem of his garment, my life will be completely changed. I wonder how many different issues in our life would be alleviated or lifted or removed from us if we actually, in our minds, in our hearts, like this woman did, actually rationalize, you know what, this is not that big of a deal. This is not, because I know when I take this issue to Jesus, he's going to hear me. I know when I take this issue to Jesus, he's going to help me. I know when I take this issue to Jesus, he can lift this issue up out of my life. Go to him in faith. Go to him in faith, believing that he is exactly who he says he is. We may have issues, but we have no issues too big for Jesus. And so that can, so that you can be, we need to ask God to help us with our issues. Pray that he'll deliver us from our issues so that we can be all that he desires for us to be. Listen, this woman knew in her heart, there goes my Savior. There goes the one who can help me with my issues. And you know what else she realized? She rationalized. She knew in her heart, this moment was not going to pass me by. <laughs> this moment was not going to pass me I'm going to make it to Jesus with my issues. The question is today, as we all have our own issues, have we rationalized today that in this moment, in this hour, that we are not going to let this, Lord, let this moment with the Lord, this time with the Lord, pass us by. I'm not saying you have to come forward. I'm not saying fall on the altar. Maybe it is in your very pew that we cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I've been asking you to fix this. But you know what? I failed to say, Lord, I know you can fix this. I know that you can fix this issue. Lord, please fix this issue. Let's pray. Lord, our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you for your word. We can't thank you for it enough, Lord. No issues in this life that are out of your reach. No issues in this life are outside of your power. We give thanks to you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen.